Hey everyone, Korean Cricket here, back with another weekly in-depth quent guide chosen by the community, which is you. The last week's voting was pretty diverse and like you couldn't really agree on where you want to go. The direction was something square tail. So this is why this week we'll look at some anti-meta square tail. We'll look at the card and deck list, a mulligan guide, the general gameplay plan, a guide how to play against each matchup and then we'll look at an example match. Subscribe if you like what I'm doing and vote down in the comments for next week's guide. Let's go! The core of the deck is a mixture of elves and dwarves. We took the best from both worlds and just put it together. On the dwarf side, we are using dwarven agitators which can spawn a copy of a random dwarf in the deck. Since we only have one in there, it will always spawn a dwarven skirmisher which deals 3 damage and if the enemy survives, it will buff itself by 3, therefore providing us with 12 points or 13 if played by an agitator. Sometimes you can also use the damage of the skirmishers to line up a good double scorch. On the elf side, we are using half of hunter for solid 12 points as well and elven mercenary. Elven mercenary pulls two special cards from our deck and then lets us choose one to play. In this deck, those are Ma Kam Ale for straight 12 points or reconnaissance for thinning and to be able to put elves quickly onto the board. Playing Elven Mercenary and choosing Reconnaissance into another Merc and repeating that until 3 Mercs are on the board and then choosing half of Hunters enables you to get Aeliren onto the board in your first play. For those of you new to Quent, Aeliren always jumps from deck onto a random row onto the battlefield as soon as 5 Elves are on the friendly side of the board. Barkley Elves gives us additional tempo by playing and strengthening a random Dwarf by 3, therefore providing us with a minimum of 70 points when played. Hattori lets us revive a dead elf mercenary or preferable Barkley Elves for a 20 point play which comes handy in run 3. Yevin is always good to have to counter spy the enemy while giving us access to our spells and will give us a scorch target if Shiru struggles to find a target. Ice and Grim Outlaw acts as a thin and spell access tool with the ability to create a silver elf as fallback if there are no spells left in the deck. The spells Ice and Grim Outlaw can pull are Marching Orders, giving us access to Agitators, Mercenaries, but most importantly Hattori when we fit the deck, Artifact Compression to get rid of a high point unit on the enemy side or to deny an enemy's win condition by transforming a core card like Neckers or Greatsword, and of course Markham Ale and Recon, but Mercenaries should play those or you may end up with a dead one. By choosing Ifni as a leader, you can use all those spells a second time, making this a very flexible deck countering a lot of other decks in the current meta. Don't forget that you can also replay the spell that she responds. So you could play two Scorches against Hand Buff or two Epidemics against Soldier Swarm. Aglaze banishes a spell from the enemy's graveyard and plays it, providing us with a ton of value in most of the cases, while giving us great versatility against decks which play a lot of spells like Alchemy. Muzzle is our last gold card, stealing an enemy unit with a maximum of 8 power, therefore hitting for 16 points, but most importantly, denying the enemy an engine or a keycard off the deck. Typical targets are Achispor, Greatswords, Neckers, Dragoons, etc. Uh, you get the idea. If an enemy card is not in muscle range, then we can use our Dwarven Skirmishes to beat it down to 8 points and below. The mulligan would look like this. Cards we keep are Dwarven Agitator, Elven Mercenary, Barclay, Yavin, your Silver Spells and Golds. Cards you want to get rid of are all bronze spells so Elven Mercenary can pull them, Dwarven Skirmisher so Dwarven Agitator has a target, and Aeliren so she can jump out of the deck. Blacklisting is very important here and very effective because every card is included 3 times. For example, if you have one Recon in hand and two Skirmishers, then start with mulliganing the Recon so the chances of getting cards you want is higher because you will not draw into another Recon for the duration of the mulligan. But since Aeliren lurks into the deck, don't take the risk and mulligan a third time if you haven't already mulliganed her. Since we don't run that many elves, there are not much chances to get Aeliren onto the board and by having her on hand in round 1, you will probably be stuck with her until the remaining of the match. Our gameplay plan would look like this. Round 1, we want to fit. We start off with elf mercenaries into recon to pull more mercenaries and half of hunters to get Aeliren out. Then we place Dwarven Agitators and Barclay for even more tempo. After this, Hattori will have decent resurrection targets, but keep count of your skirmishers in the deck because you need to at least have one skirmisher in the deck for run 3 when we use Hattori to resurrect Barclay. 
The strength of this deck lies in the stable and consistent value output, but decks like Swaps Cartel, Great Swords, etc. will be able to outtempo us in the long run. Therefore, we always play into round 1 to not give away control of the length of round 2. Splitting rounds into 2 half long rounds or even 3 shorter rounds is the perfect situation. The key to winning round 3 is to utilize the options you are presented with, if need, as the leader of the deck. Depending on the matchup, you may want to choose between double artifact compression, Scorch for Shiru, or maybe marching orders to deny the enemy's gameplay entirely, or to just put quite some points on the board for marching orders. Since most of the gameplay depends on the matchup, let's better get right into them. Great Swords. For Ifni, we have two artifact compressions ready to deny two Great Swords, and in round 3 we can use Shiru to take care of the last remaining Great Sword, therefore robbing the enemy of all their win conditions. If we are lucky and draw Muzzle as well, then we can even steal the third Great Sword, enabling us to scorch a big boat. As long as we draw those cards, we should not run into problems with this matchup, and cards like Yevin and Isengrim will help us to get access to them. If we miss some of those cards, then wait until they have set up their engines and then pass to not get out tempoed in a long round and then to force them to redo their setup in round 2. Veterans Veterans have some decent consistent value output as well, but they will have a lot of 11 point units on the board thanks to the Bear Masters. Try to get off a triple scorch and if they use Mandrake on a Bear Master, then just muzzle it to prevent its resurrection later. Otherwise, use Muscle on a Strengthened Hunter, maybe you can even deny them a Spare Maiden target. Consider creating an Elf from Isengrim, since Artifact Compression may not be too useful and Teruviel and Co. can earn you more points. X-Men Muscle, Compress and Scorch the X-Men and Darren to remove a significant threat. Weather will still tick, but through splitting rounds you can evade a bit of damage and force the enemy to reapply it. A Glaze may be able to steal a Skellige Storm, so your enemy does not get ahead from weather alone. Play 1 point units always on the left side of the board, so Skellige Storm is not able to tick for full value. Swap Square Tell. They shine in a long round, so pass before you expect your gets to be played. If you are stuck in a longer round, then use your skirmishers to kill off 3 point elves or they will grow big later. Keep artifact compression and scorch to get rid of big fryhead officers. Nilfgaard hand buff. Try to line up a double scorch with your skirmishers and get rid of the remaining buffed up units with artifact compression and use Ifni to repeat it. In round 1, try to push without the spells as long as possible because using them in round 3 will be more valuable. If you have artifact compression on hand and you think you can deny the setup with a double artifact compression, then go for it. But if your enemy manages to set up the hand buff unit anyway, then you have given away a big part of your win condition, so this is a risky play. Alchemy. A glaze will be very valuable here because you will have a big choice of spells available. If the enemy plays Kahir and uses Mandric onto Calvet, then play a glaze, steal Mandric and undo it, or you will be able to hit by a big point spike in round 3. If the enemy uses Mandrake on Roach, then you could consider hitting it with a Skirmisher and then just steal it with a Muscle. Other than that, Artifact Compression will be your friend because you can deny Witches as the Resurrection targets and for Ale and Swallow, the units will be quite big and will give you some points. Soldiers They will play a lot of Slave Infantry, so don't play your 1 point units. Play half of Hunters and Skirmishers as starters and wait until 2 or 3 Infantries are on the board. Then use Shiru with Epidemic to clear them all, therefore denying your enemy targets for centuries. When they try to do the setup again, you can use Ifni to repeat, but you need to evaluate if you can hold back your 1 point units for a bit longer. Typically, one Epidemic is enough anyway. Deathwish Muzzle on Archespor early in the round and keep putting points onto the board. You can think of using double artifact compression on their Daos, which is not a lot of points initially, but prevents Brewers from resurrecting them and also denies a good Griffin target. If they play 26 cards and everything looks like Nova will come out, then keep Shiru to get rid of her. Moonlight Let them play their Moonlights and then get out of the round after you have seen 2 or 3, better 3. In round 3, when they use the remaining Moonlight, you can use a Glaze to steal a Moonlight from the graveyard and then override it, so the werewolves won't trigger anymore. Don't roast deck too much or the Blood Moon will punish you, but except that, just keep using your bronze cards. And now for some example gameplay. My folk have suffered much. Francesca, ah, Francesca. Have no place in Broccolon. 
Okay, let's see. Um, we have two skirmishes here, which is not what I want. I think we start with blacklisting reconnaissance. And there you go. Okay, it gives us a gold cut. Perfect. I think then we want to get rid of or blacklist the skirmishes. There we got the Merc. Is there something we don't want to draw? It's Illyran. So it's risky from now on. I mean, one skirmish in hand is okay. We have like two in here. So Dwarf Meditator is fine. This can give us marching orders into um, currently into Open Mercenaries or the Agitator. We could risk this, but I'm, I probably won't do this. We have enough uh, elves to get Alien out, so it's fine. Now let's see what he's playing. And depending on what he's playing, we'll need to adapt. We're on red, which is good. So let's see how this will um, turn out. The idea is just to get value on the board by like solely playing 12. At last. 12. Elfman, okay, this is interesting. Oh, <laughs> okay, it means we really need to get um, Illyrin out quickly. Or we, we may end up with her on hand. I'm not sure what he's playing. I don't think there will be a Mills Curatel, whatever. But hey, <laughs> what do I know? We'll see. Is there actually a way that you can play like Mills Cartel? I don't think so. I think it's just to look up cards he wants to. Like, I don't know, maybe you play some Siri Dash or something. Well, oh, he just extends the round because he plays uh, Swaps Cartel. It could be. I mean, good thing is here he can Scorch because there's an 8 point unit on the board and he also has a 6 point unit. So, I actually think we are playing against um, Swaps Cartel. So, let's see when we go out of the round. Because we want to slip around. cannot be forgiven. Okay. Kills my half of hunters. So the question is, like, I, I need to get mercenaries out. Right, fine. He could go out of the round now if he wants to. I don't think he wants to. And if he does, then we simply play round two. Because I will not take the risk of a long run free if I don't know what I'm up against. Didn't expect him. I mean, he's like, or is he? He. <laughs> However, he's really cool um, because he can deal a lot of damage. It's basically like 12, um, 16 points. Okay, there's a Hawker support. Well, let's see what this will be. Um, let's get go for the recon. Right. And well, there's the agitator. And what do we hit? I think we just hit Elven one buff. There we go. We actually should have hit Milan to enable whatever. <laughs> this Scourge if he hits this. I don't know. Probably doesn't matter at all, but hey. So the problem we have now is um, I want to get Illyrian out, but we only like we need one more elf. So we could try to go Isengrim to get the elf out. But Isengrim would Why give me marching so orders. We would give, I, if, which could be either give him work or an agitator, so it's fine actually. Oh, just stay here and play for value by going for the ale. I think we just want to push red. We could steal the fog now with a glaze. Which would be okay, I guess, because then we, not we have fog taking, but he has. But we already could steal already marching orders, so like that's already better. I think we just play into the fog for now. Let's get Alien run out. We could create an elf, actually. Or we fin a bit more. The question is, what do we want to... I don't think we need to fin that much, actually. So let's just create an elf here. That's actually not bad. Just can give me nothing. So do we have a target? Yeah, we have. Let's just do the same with which he uh, did. Yeah, just hit for quite some value. There we go. And there's Elirin. 21 points ahead. This may push him out of the round because if you play Veda, like what's happening is um, you play a very low tempo. So by playing very high tempo after he played Veda, we may be able to push him out of the round. Well, let's see. I mean, 21 points is hard. Like, you re oh, this is not enough. So, definitely. So, even if he plays, like, Swap Square Tell or something, which he does because we just saw the Wingards, um, I think we can pass because, like, one card up is still one card up. And if he, like, just plays in turn two, then we're two cards up. And we have a Shiru. We have an artifact compression onto big Riot Officers. I think we can do this. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just passing now. If he plays like a long run free, which would, which would be what he probably should do, um, then we still won't cut up and I think we have the tools to deal with some of his cards. 
I also have like lays with targets. I think it's fine. I also think that like Isengrim Outlaw instead of getting Marching Orders, but like creating an elf was the better choice because if we get Marching Orders from our Glaze, we're already thinning a lot. So we will get access to our mercenaries, to our agitators, and like worst case at some point we like we don't have anything to play anymore. <laughs> so I think it's fine. I yeah, it Sasuke. He already no plays Sasuke in this round, it's good, because this can be like a big value push on his side if he swaps the wingards. So that's nice. Let's keep that for now. And let's see what we do now. Now the mulligan is pretty straightforward. Because there's nothing we really want to avoid. We could want to avoid recon, but I think we actually get rid of the marker mail. Because this can give me a mercenary as well. So, gives me more access to the cards we want to have. Um, the good thing is about like only have one Markham Ale in the deck. We always are sure that we can play recon sense. And now let's see if he wants to play into the round or not. We don't have access to Spy. But I don't think that's a big issue. What you want to do is you want to play Barkley at some point so uh, Tori can rest it. On the other hand, we can also rest an Agitator. Which in this case means I just play my Dwarfus Skirmish, I guess. There we go. So do one cut up into a long run free. Um, long run free is potentially bad for us because we just have solid value output and he like gets better the longer he plays. But as I said, we have Shiru, we have Artifact Compression, we have Ifne, and we have a muscle to steal one of his elves. I think we're fine. I don't want a mulligan actually. I think this is fine. We don't want to get off his commission hand here. We don't need a Tori because we have Barkley in hand currently. And this can always pull us a Tori later if you really need him. So I think it's fine-ish. Question is, with what do we start off? Because we only have offensive cards here. Um, so we could start with a glaze, but we don't want to play weather somewhere. I don't want to play that skirmisher. So the opening is pretty, pretty me here. So what to do? I think there is like no choice, you just need to play that skirmisher onto the board. Or you play fog into a random row, which re which really want to avoid. We'll pay man bad bad Let's play that skirmisher. What can we do? It's only seven like the the extra card just brought a seven point uh seven extra points, which is not much if you compare it to all the long run power from him. Good thing is that we get Sasuke out of him, so that's like a big thing. But hey, we'll see. I hope that Muscle will be maybe giving me a Dragoon or something, that would be awesome. But this looks like Create or like a Choose Whatever card. Blind, oh, like Hopper's, Hopper's Approach? That's actually nice, I think. <laughs> okay, I'll take this. But actually better even if, we ha if you have Hattori in hand, but hey. Um, I don't know. Boy, just, hi there. just use it on Mercenary. I can also use it on Shiru, but actually it doesn't matter at all in this case. If you only have Shiru, like in the case, you could buff Shiru so Epidemic actually hits something else if you can't get the Scorch off. But, uh, this is exactly what we want to have. So what we do here is now we get the Agitator out and hit it. So if you use the Recon here. Have strength, and get the Agitator, there we go. And with the Agitator, we're gonna use a Skirmisher onto the Dragoon, and with this, Muscle can steal it. And then we have, if he doesn't buff it up until then, then we have this engine ticking on our side for a full 16 point Muscle, which will be pretty good. I hope he doesn't buff it up. That would be me. Thank you very much. Give it to me. That's mm. oh. pretty decent. I really like this. And we currently have um, Scorch would hit the 10 point Dragoon. So, like, I, I probably think he has a lot of um, Elven War Dances and stuff. You'll regret your mom ever squirting. Question is, like, Elven War Dances will be pretty high value, but, like, if you just out of a compression just now, then we um, don't have a problem later. Which could work. Because, like, this will buff it up. Like, we, we, if you out of a compress now, we would probably gain, like, I don't know. 
up to six value extra, so it's like, like, like a 16 unit, 16 point unit. And we can always get a Tori now through, or we actually will get a Tori from this. And then we can need to res an Agitator. You know what? Let's do the artifact compression here. It's still 10 points, um, Dragoon, and um, by this, now those cards won't get buffed. And we are 19 points ahead. I think it's a, a good a good thing to do. So let's see. Uh, the next thing I probably do is we want to get the Hattori out, we want to get the Agitator out, and then play another Skirmisher before we pull the last Dwarfs out of the deck with Barclay. I could also think of playing Markham Ale now, but... Well... So let's see, there's a Tori. Well, with Markham Ale, we will a get the Igni anyway. Oh, we actually can get Milan out, I forgot about it. So that's actually even better, I guess. Let's calculate. Like, there's a Skirmisher, it is one, it's 13 points. Well, this is way more, right? So. Let's play everything in here and. Follow me this way. Pew pew. 31 points ahead. However, like the big value push from him is still coming. I think this is something we want to get rid of again immediately. I'm not sure if we want to waste Shiroon dead because like, I mean, he buffed it up. So we could use Shiroon then we just decide if you want to uh, Scorch or Artifact Compression with, uh, with her. So I think we just use this now and Scorch it away. This is why if he gives you so much utility, you can just play your cards or your Shiroon like, um, like spell cards early. And then with Ifni, sorry, with Ifni you just, you know, think what you want to do. And this is why, you, uh, I guess, where you can see its Not value, uh, ST, you because it's just, it just pumps out value. Um, so a Glaze will probably use to get us a marching orders onto the last Dwarven Skirmisher. Um, but before that, we're gonna go with Barclay. Mahakam! We're not Elven hitting the 10, Marley. we may still want to Scorch. But if you don't want to scourge, we can just use the artifact compression. Because we think this will get buffed up. Do we though? Because we killed the dragoons. We killed the hawks, but I'm not sure if this will grow actually. We'll see. 42 points ahead at least. So this is, as I said, like it's just putting out value. Um, this were probably the elven wardens now. Not wardens, the swordmasters, the elven swordmasters. The thing is like he already used a lot of um, hand buff on his dragoons, so they won't be too big. There will be some of them which are big. Okay. What is? What did he? You'll regret your okay, he buffs it up again. That's a shame. Uh, we could have maybe used Double Squidge here. Everything Let's just right. hope that Mark Ale hits the right ones. There you go. Perfect. Okay, that's perfect. So even if he has something like Igni, which I don't think he has, like if he'll only hit like that nine point unit here. As long as you play a glaze into the back row. <laughs> okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Never mind me. There's Igni, look at this. This is why we played it like this. Nice. Um, okay, now we need to think what do we do with the 12 point unit? What do we do with marching orders? I think we're gonna also have decoy now. We could decoy Tori into what? Into another agitator. But like, decoy, like, like, Hattori and Barkley's um, Ori out there. Barkley would have been a good decoy target. Is it still a good decoy target? Marching Orders will buff it by two. He will buff it by three, but we'll lose the points. Ah, uh, I don't know what. I think we just Link go for You'll feel the Marching Orders. There's a skirmisher. Well, let's hit something like that. 65 points ahead. Whatever he plays, we just use. <laughs> oh, it's too real, probably. Okay, in this case, you can't scourge, but what we can do is. Humans have no place in broccoli. If we could get Yavin. <laughs> Actually, if we use Markamail, it will be 12 points. If you do this, we can Trurul. But Trurul will hit any. Like, hit the artifact compression anyway. So Trurul is currently. We don't know how big Trurul is, but it will never be enough. Even if you play not, if, even if you didn't play it, so there's nothing to worry about with 82 points. Let's see how big it is. 15 points. Oh, there you go. 109 to 50. 
If you're looking for more in-depth Quint guides, you can watch them over here. I got a lot more Quint content for you. If you like what I'm doing, leave a subscribe and don't forget to vote down in the comments below for next week's guide. I hope to see you in game and have a nice day. Bye.